Okay, we're back live here in uh, Santa Clara, California. This is the Velocity Conference, O'Reilly Media's Velocity Conference. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. The Cube is our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the student from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm here with uh, James Turnbull from Puppet Labs, um, technology uh, VP? VP of technology. V VP of technology, okay, good, get that right. Uh, you guys have grown out of the, uh, the puppet chef early days of recipes and provisioning and whatnot, so, so that is great, first generation cloud, but now cloud's growing up, mainstream. Uh, I want to get your take on, on two things. First, what's going on with Puppet? Okay, you guys have got uh, uh, Puppet, you know, actual Puppet code base, and also the company. And then let's talk about what's going on with DevOps and Agile and mobile. Sure. Um, so Puppet Labs uh, is about is about eight years old, I guess, and uh, uh, we started uh, uh, we started off as a as a, our CEO Luke Kniez as a sort of a sole operator, and he was the he was largely sort of the open source software sales model. Um, and we're now about 160 people, um, and we just closed a 30 million dollar round led by VMware in February. Um, and we're sort of fairly uh, uh, we sort of started off in the open source world, and we now sell an enterprise version of the product, Puppet Enterprise. Um, and we come, uh, we come to that sort of world with a sort of a, I guess a, you know, we, a long heritage of sort of operations people and, and sysadmins and our, our primary customers, the people we, we sell the product to are, are larger sysadmins and heavily used in the web ops and sort of cloud world. Why VMware putting 30 million in? I see VMware's obviously um, part of EMC Federation um, that we've covered in the past. Um, but they must be interested in something because they sell to a lot of enterprises. Yep. What, what's, their, what, what's their interest in you guys besides so making some money on, on a good investment? So, um, I, I think obviously they're keenly interested in making some money on a good investment. Um, I also think that they're interested in, um, in seeming and standing near innovative companies. Um, I think VMware is conscious of the fact that they launched the virtualization revolution. Cloud is now sort of an extension of that revolution. Um, and VMware is evaluating where they fit into that world and, what, and, and, what, and the companies they sell to now, those enterprise companies that they sell retail software to, uh, whether it be vSphere right up to the vCloud stack, um, you know, I think they're trying to stake their place in that world and, and we're obviously a player in that space and, and I think they're interested in, in looking at how our technology can help them be more innovative and more agile. What mega trends are out there fueling the growth of Puppet Labs and what specific problem are you guys solving right now? So I, I think that the, probably the big, the, the, two, the two big trends that I see uh, at the moment is, is uh, virtualization and cloud. Um, so uh, a lot of our customers uh, are looking at automation because they've, they've basically reached the, the, the limit to which they can humanly scale problems and they now need to automate those problems away or they need to you know, uh, use uh, automation tools as a force multiplier. And the second thing we're seeing is that the business is much more demanding of, of results they want. They want their service delivered in, in, you know, instead of waiting six weeks for a server to put their, to run up their marketing application, they want it. They want it tomorrow. They want to be able to change it on demand. Um, and as a result, we're seeing a lot of sort of customer self-service black sort of a, you know, a, a, you know, I have a self-service console. I'm a developer. I want to get a, a copy of the production stack, and I want to be able to develop against it. And I want to deploy it to the, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and those sort of uh, requiring those sort of more more aggressive sort of time frames and service levels has meant that you know you can't do that with people. You can't throw people at that problem. You need to throw tooling, people, and culture at that problem. Uh, Sean Douglas, who's ex EMC Ventures now over at Service Mesh, uh, shout out to Sean and Service Mesh. Well, good plug there. <laughs> it wasn't planned, but a plug to those guys. He always uses the term with me: infrastructure as code. Yep. Which speaks to the DevOps kind of mindset. You know, you got the Facebooks, you got the Googles, people have to build their own and really make it work at an ops level, at high availability, at scale, but it's really programming mentality. Um, what does that infrastructure as code mean? I mean, what is he, what is he pointing to? Obviously they do orchestration, I mean, you're more on, uh, uh, on the end. Uh, sure, actually, interestingly enough, the, co the term infrastructure as code was coined by one of my co-founders, Andrew Schaefer. Um, so he was the one that actually coined that, that phrase. That Shout out to him. Um, <laughs> what a coincidence. Uh, well, you know, it's, <laughs> I think the infrastructure as code meme is, is really important because it's, it's treating, instead of your infrastructure being a special sort of snowflake, you treat your infrastructure like you treat your code. You know, you, you are, you, are uh, you, know, you build it, you deploy it, um, you know, you, you, it has a life cycle. Um, it's, not a, uh, it's no longer a sort of closed system. It's, it's, now, it's now closely tied to the applications you run on top of it. Um, and it's also keenly sort of, um, it's become keenly apparent that 
if you want to be flexible and scalable, that you need to be able to take that infrastructure, run it up in a new data center, run it up in a new cloud, take that workload and replicate it. And you can only do that really if you, if you have a way of abstracting the sort of complexities of your infrastructure away the same way you yeah. abstract some of the design. And that really, is, that really points to the DevOps uh, uh, perspective because if you think about it, I was talking to one um, IT developer and he's like, you know, look, I got code and local host and I'm ready to push it, I'm waiting. Yep. I'm waiting for some servers to be, permitted to be installed. Yep. That's the old days. Bare metal stacking up rack and stack, and people don't want to up, you know, install Linux again. I mean, although Linux has been very popular and successful, but that that's going away. The new schools like, hey, I want elastic, I want resources, I want to be able to move my service levels yep. around, I want to have service levels that are, uh, that are that are highly reliable, high quality. Well, that, that but does, I don't yeah. want to have to be provisioning gear and reinstalling patches, waiting for a security update. Yeah. That developer doesn't care. You're right. That developer doesn't care about the stack, and the business doesn't care about the stack. All they care about is the application gets delivered to, at the time frame they want it to, and it operates in a way that um, with the right sort of performance characteristics so the customers are happy. Um, otherwise, they, you know, they, they, can, they don't care what version of Linux you deploy or what version the package is or whether the security thing is happening. All they want to know is the results. Well, since you brought up the stack thing, because this has come up multiple times here at Velocity, uh, share with the folks out there, what is Velocity? Because Velocity is a very uh, cutting edge conference. I believe it's a leading indicator where the development community is going with DevOps in particular. I'm going to just say DevOps. It's probably the, the most generic categorical thing I can point at right now. Um, but it's, it's not just DevOps, it's not just guys with infrastructure, it's developers. Guys on the developer edge, uh, programming codes, so whether it's JavaScript, Python, whatever it is, they're programming it. Mm -hmm. And they need to be more agile on the, on the infrastructure side. What is this conference, why is this conference so popular for the alpha geek community um, and not yet in kind of in the mainstream eyes? Because, I mean, it's out there, it's mainstream, let's say it's getting there, but it's like not like, it's not, it's, it's not like a cloud show, you can't say it's a cloud show. You can't say sure. it's just a front end show either. So it's kind of a mix. I think when Velocity started and addressed the need where the fact that there was no real place for the web performance and web ops people to articulate their concerns, to talk about the things they wanted to talk about, about advancing the technology in the industry, um, I actually think it's changing. This year in particular, I've noticed that, that there's a, a lot more sort of, um, I guess you call them mainstream IT people here. Um, and that a lot of us who are in the sort of, um, that sort of web ops community um, uh, are very much seeing the, um, uh, very much seeing that, that this is almost a social interaction for us. It's like a, it's a, it's a catch up with the tribe sort of experience. Yeah. And that, that the people joining the conference now are actually so, I mean, previously it's a, what are the cool guys at Facebook and Google and, and uh, uh, you know, Etsy and all that thing doing? But now we see people from State Farm and Bank of America and organizations you wouldn't traditionally see in this world who are sort of starting to adopt some of the practices and principles. Um, I, I guess uh, one, one of my, um, uh, one of my uh, uh, O'Reilly friends call, calls it, uh, calls it that not just the cool kids anymore. Um, yeah, the smart kids, and I yeah. think that's what's happening. And again, this comes back down to the trends that we were pointing at. I brought up the VMware mainly to kind of tease that out. I mean, why would VMware be investing in Puppet Labs? Well, because you guys are doing some really good work around, you really start with provisioning, and now you're in essentially cloud automation. There's a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. going on. DevOps, cloud ops, whatever you want to call it. It's mm -hmm. data center ops now. So what's, where this is going, it's going to the data center, mm -hmm. right? So clearly, now a whole new ball game emerges. The state farms are here. They want to invest in robust infrastructure. They're starting to reboot their IT and enterprise infrastructure. They want to be hyperscale and be small scale at the same time. So that's a challenge. What do you see for that? Those guys out there. What are they learning? Where's where are they starting? What's the what's the sentiment? What's their environments look like? And what are their challenges? So I think there's two things happening. The first one is that. Um, a lot of those organizations are discovering that things they thought they were risk averse about uh, are not actually true. They're like, we can continuously deploy things. We don't have to wait six weeks to deploy an application. That, that you know, they're, they're reevaluating their risk appetite. Um, and the second aspect of it is that um, they're, they're starting to look at things like cloud and virtualization um, and they've discovered that the biggest challenge is not tooling and it's not technology, it's not infrastructure, it's how you change the culture of those organizations. So they're inherently siloed conservative organizations where change is a threat as opposed to an opportunity unlike the web ops world where, where if you don't deploy every day, multiple times a day sometimes, then you don't keep up with your competitors. Um, you can't scale out. You, you know, Pinterest is not going to uh, go to a, a, a million users in, in, in a whatever, three months or whatever it was, um, if you don't deploy you know, on a fairly frequent basis. Um, and they, they're starting to understand that they need to change the way their organizations do IT business. Um, 
What about the, the big guys like IBM, HP, they're trying to get back in the cloud. Are they going to be fully tooled up? Where do they need to outsource? Where do they need to be partnering with? What's your take just as a, as a participant in the community? I mean, because they have a lot of inertia. They're like the big aircraft carrier. It doesn't really turn on a dime, but when it moves, it moves pretty, pretty big and, and has a big wake to it. So, so my immediate experience for Puppet Labs was working at a very large bank. And um, so I, I've been a Tivoli and a BMC customer in the past. Um, those tools are, I, I've always described Tivoli as being, doing lots of, a, a huge suite of things, not very well. Um, and I think BMC falls into a similar sort of category. Um, I think they're starting to understand that they need to actually change the way their tooling works. You, you can no longer have, particularly when you look at open source tools where the, where the, the development cycles are quite fast, where the, the sprints are happening, where new features appear. You can no longer survey your customers once a year and then go, you'll get some, that one of those features maybe you know, in Q2 of next year. Um, I think they're having to build smaller tool sets, integrate more with other vendors, um, and deploy solutions that are no longer monolithic, but in fact, uh, combinations of best of breed tools. So if I'm an IBM or a BMC, um, and, and I, I have conversations with those guys, they are reaching out to organizations like us to say, how do we integrate? How do we leverage the, the sort of the agility you have in the market? Well, I, Agile's a big theme. I mean, I've been, been I love Agile, but you know, Agile doesn't make for bad coding. And we, we've mm -hmm. always debated about QA and the old days of coding with QA and test and dev. You still got to do the, you still got to do the work. Iterating doesn't mean mm. put out crappy code. Mm. You still got to have some, some strategies and architecture to it. So I got, I got to ask you, with the multi-cloud vision that most big companies are having, they, they want to use multiple clouds, like they use multiple vendors. Mm -hmm. Like I have you know, EMC drives, but I might have NetApp filers. I might have you know, a little bit of HP gear here and IBM over there, or IBM services managing it. So you know, these are multi-vendor, large-scale data centers. Um, and not everyone has the luxury of building their own data center full turnkey. Mm -hmm. So those guys have to deal with that. So how, how does a, a company deal? And you guys have a different view because you guys are providing those, those key software components to help them manage these clouds. What is that reality in multi-cloud? Is it real? Do you see that being a real factor? And if so, what things should be people be thinking about as they step back and start architecting out their solutions? So I'm, I'm start, I think that there's some companies that are leading indicators that are, are looking at things like uh, they have multi-cloud solutions, they're, 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 using, they're deploying workloads based on, um, uh, on cost. So for example, you know, it, it, it's 4 p.m. On, on, the, on the East Coast, you know, I, 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 that's a peak time for us, I'll buy some spot instances from a, a, a US East, then I'll shut those down and I, I, when, when the time zone changes in the West, I'll, I'll bring those up again. Or I'll move them between um, local cloud and then burst out to, 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 to you know, a cloud service like AWS. Um, so I think, um, there's a bunch of those companies doing that. I think they're leading indicators and I think the rest of the, you know, when things like the PCI DSS uh, standard changes and you can actually do things, some of that transactions in the cloud and things like that, that we'll see a lot more companies follow that. Um, I think the key changes they need to make around their, their architecture is they can no longer, they probably have to take a bit more risk when it comes to where they manage the data and how they manage the data. Um, and they also probably need to build things that are far more sort of service oriented architectures where there are small components that it's easy to deploy <laughs> Um, where the state is maintained in a, you know, a, a central location um, as opposed to the sort of very traditional monolithic um, enterprise sort of SAP-like applications which you, you literally are not agile, you can't move yeah. them around, you can't <laughs> deploy them from a, you can't, you know, doing a disaster recovery with SAP is, is like a, a multi-month sort of testing exercise. You can't flip between data centers yeah, the same yeah. way a web application can. Yeah, and the uh, workload movement too, you have workload management yeah. too, it's another, yeah. another uh, force that's driving it. Yeah. All right, so I got to ask you, now, so you guys are, you know, on the, like I said, very respected company. You know, started out as a startup again, 30 million, still growing, still kind of in that I wouldn't say startup phase, but you guys are still early. You're on the front front edge of the, all the action. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at as VP of technology within Puppet and beyond that you're watching in the marketplace? You said you're that you're looking at saying, hey, we're watching those those forces, and we pay attention to that. What are the important things that you guys are watching? I think we're seeing a, a move up the stack in terms of um, tooling. So I think we're seeing. Um, a lot of people perceive in the, in the web ops community that the configuration management uh, problem is kind of solved. Um, I, I don't think the future is evenly distributed in that sense, like the state farms of the world are coming to this later than, than other people. But in terms of the innovation, I think the innovation is moving in just a couple of new areas. One, uh, I'm keenly interested in monitoring. What's happening, with, um, like uh, traditional monitoring has been things like Nagios, and it's been around a long time. And the fact that it's stayed around for so long um, suggests to me that, that, that it, it, it's, it's, it's ripe for disruption. Um, and there's a few companies, Boundary and Datadog, and a bunch of other people sort of doing some stuff. Datadog in this space. will be in the queue um, later. Yep. Tomorrow. Uh, and there's a few interesting tools like Sensu and stuff like that that are coming out of them. At which so that's an area. 
um, that I think is, is ripe for disruption. The other one is that um, people want to move up the stack and become sort of application deployment, uh, application lifecycle management, that stuff has become, uh, most of the tools that are out there are not very agile, they're not very good at doing that, the same fast moving sprint sort of stuff and deploying, certainly the, the deploying the applications. So I think um, we're seeing quite a lot of movement um, the purchase of, uh, CA's purchase of Noliosoft, um, IBM's purchase of Urban Code. Um, but there's a bunch of interesting acquisitions happening there where it seems to be that that's the next problem that needs to get solved. We, we, we can provision the systems fast, we can configure the systems right, but we now need to get our speed to market for application right. Great, so I got to ask you about, you know, preferences. I don't want to say one's a Democrat or the Republicans or, you know, religious argument. You know, in Czech it's all about the religious wars, you know, like, you know, this stack versus that stack. And, you know, you know we've all been on the, the old listservs and the old forums when people would go bloody with these arguments. It's kind of really philosophy. So, Chef and Puppet has always been kind of a personal choice. Mm -hmm. um, how is that going between you guys and say Chef? Is this still the same kind of thing? It's more of a feel issue? Is there any advancements on, on what you guys are doing over Chef and other things? Um, I, I think we have a slightly different approach. Um, where you know, I could go into a lot of technical, philosophical ahead, yeah. details, but I, I, I don't think it's necessary. It's like, it becomes Summer, a bit yeah. of a Vim and Emacs argument, <laughs> and, and I'm kind of agnostic about the stuff. But uh, I think we have slightly different customers, and I think we have slightly different, slightly different market. I rarely run up to them, run against them in, in, in accounts. Um, we're heavily used in uh, on-premise enterprise. Um, uh, they probably have a little bit of an edge on us in the sort of the cloud space in terms of sort of marketing and that sort of stuff. Um, but as a tool. Um, we're very good at handling the on-premise and very good at allowing customers to sort of burst out to the cloud or to move their workloads around. And that's a traditional enterprise. Um, and that's a traditional enterprise. And also, we have a very low barrier to entry. Like, I can teach a sysadmin how to use Puppet in like half an hour. Like, I'm, I, base, I build a basic stack in like half an hour's worth of work. Um, <laughs> Yeah, versus Chef years is, ago, is, 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 yeah. a, is a is a is a Ruby-based product. Um, it, you need to have a little bit more programming skills. I think the barrier to entry is a little bit higher, um, and it's and our tool is less threatening to a lot of traditional enterprise yeah. segments who don't want to become programmers. I mean, adoption is really a key thing about the human. We just talk about human labor factor resources, mm -hmm. you know, around deployment. Look at MongoDB, right? I mean, you wouldn't say how fast that thing grew because developers, land stack, love Mongo. Mm -hmm. It's easy to work with. Yep. So getting things going is, a, is that's a human factor. Would you agree that that's a kind of yeah. a, a big part of it? Okay, James Turnbull, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate Puppet Labs, company to watch, funded by True Ventures, just recently scored a $30 million investment from VMware. Again, on-premise, we're seeing with the, the flash technology, on-premise clouds are real, private clouds also known as, um, and hybrid clouds is kind of the delivery to the public. So I think we're going to see a lot of different uh, traversals of cloud deployments, certainly from the enterprises, mm -hmm. and, and people are looking at continuously deploying. So I think you've got a good vision there. This is theCUBE, we are live at the Velocity Conference. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.